fantastic conversation. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bucket Listers. Welcome to another episode of the Bucket List Live podcast. And I've got Warren Davies on here and uh, the Unbreakable Farmer. We've, uh, we're right in the middle of coronavirus. We are all in isolation. We're all in quarantine and uh, we're all stuck at home. So this is, uh, this is a, unique, <laughs> a unique time in history that we can get experts in like Warren to talk about what is vital right now and that is mental health and mental well-being and resilience and persistence and determination, all the stuff that Warren's been talking about for years and years. And mate, uh, thanks a lot for jumping on. No worries, mate. Thanks for having me. Um, real pleasure to be talking to you today. Yeah, yeah. But how do you relate this this coronavirus to to farming? I mean, you've got the farming background, and you've been through droughts, floods, and everything else. And we'll get to how you got to be the unbreakable farmer in a second. But you know, like any quick tips, words, words of advice. Um, yeah, how do we get through this drought? Yeah, and I and I suppose that, that you can draw any sort of analogies, mate, to this yeah. to what we're going through at the moment, and and you know, and, and particularly in my story, like I've I've been in this position before where I've lost everything, like um, you yeah, know, lost right. my farm, walked away with nothing, not knowing what I was going to do next, all those things, and and I think that the bottom line is you've just got to stay um, true to yourself and and know or be confident that you will come out the other side. And, and, and sometimes that's really scary when you're sitting in this place where, you know, at the moment you may have lost your job or, you know, you're not working, you're, you're cooped up at home, which is not normal. Mm. Um, you've got to kind of look past that, the bigger picture and, and, and know that you will get through. Like we will survive, um, you know, how that playing field will be or how that will look on the other side, you know, might be quite, totally different. But for me, as a dairy farmer mate all my life, never ever thought that what I'd be standing in front of groups of people sharing my story. So, <laughs> you know, that that's where I look at it, you know, never ever in a million years thought that that's, yeah. this would be what I'd be doing for a job now when, you know, milking cows was my prof profession. So, you know, it might look different for you on the other yeah. side that could be that can be on one hand scary but on the other hand exciting um, and that's i think if we can keep that mindset as we move through this uh, it, it will help us come out the other end better yeah for sure how did you become the unbreakable farmer you know like how, how do we uh, how do we arrive at that that's uh, one hell of a title and we've we've been mates for a long time and you know i i know the story but for the listeners who don't know you how did you become the unbreakable farmer well, mate, I think yeah. it started with a couple of phone conversations with you over a, <laughs> over a 12 month period. And then all of a sudden you were having a, um, putting together a, a, a speaker course or, and you kind of convinced me that I had a story to share and I yeah. didn't still, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I still don't believe I've got a story to share, but, um, uh, yeah, I'll talk about how, how I get over that a bit later, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so, so I, I, I did that. I did that course, and that was the catalyst of of yeah. this. And, and and similar to the way you got the bucket list guy name, I can remember one of the guys. I'm pretty sure it was Simon or Andy that was doing the course that day. Said, you know, when we were trying to think up these these um, superhero names, as you as you put them, you know. Um, someone said you're the unbreakable farmer or and I thought shit you know oh that sounds good but still wasn't comfortable in that and I still aren't it's funny I, I still do today my first five minutes of of my talk especially if it's a group of people that are involved in agriculture I always explain because I feel like a tosser standing up in front <laughs> and saying I'm the unbreakable farmer I always explain yeah. how that come about and and yeah. it's not about being unbreakable because my story, I was more broken than unbreakable. Yeah, but it's yeah. how I kind of kept persisting to get to where I am today. Yeah, it's kind of like, and we'll get to the story in a second, because, you know, listeners, people watching this on YouTube as well, it, it is an unbelievable story. Um, but an all too common story, unfortunately, in, uh, in rural Australia, rural anywhere around the world. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny, mate, look, because I, I stand up in front of audiences as the bucket list guy, 
And then I've got some dude in the audience who's climbed Mount Everest, which I haven't, or an ultra marathoner or some sort of like base jump wingsuiter. And here I am going, oh, I'm the bucket this guy. You know, I've got a, <laughs> I've got a, <laughs> it's not a comparison thing. It's a brand. And i tell you what, it's served you in the last few years, hasn't it? And, and we'll yeah. get to what, it will get to the work that you've been doing out there and helping farmers and being the ambassador for a number of different organizations. But, you know, in short, mate, how, what's the story? How, you know, I know we, 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 we you've got the brand. What's the story that led to that? Yeah, well, so it, was, it come from, and anyone that has actually seen me speak knows that I share from a childhood perspective because once again at our, you know, at our speaker course, we're unpacking our story and trying to find the value in that story. And I, and, and I realised probably then that I had been struggling with mental health challenges for a long time, um, yeah. not just around my farming story. And it started at school with, you know, self-esteem issues and anxiety. And, and I think the underlying part of my story is that I never ever did anything about it, never reached out for help or discussed or communicated yeah. that with anyone. And yeah. eventually when, when I got older, um, that come and bit me on the backside, you know, around the, the flood. And that was probably when we got flooded out was that, that first um, trigger that started this spiral. Um, then we had a family bust up on the farm. Um, How big was your farm? Whereabouts was this? Uh, we were in Northern Victoria in a place called Tongala. And, you know, we were in relative terms to a lot of farms, we weren't that big. Um, mm. We were milking, you know, 280, 300 cows, um, you know, it was a family business. And, and when that family bust up happened, that was uh, had a major effect on my well-being because family mm. to me is my number one value. And then mm. so when my mum and dad and, and I were fighting, um, yeah. it really had a big effect and that spiral continued out of control. But I was really determined to succeed as a farmer because I'd kind of failed at school. Failure was part of my repertoire and I didn't want to fail at being a farmer because I really um, prided myself on what I was doing so mm, uh, mm. so we ended up buying mum and dad out of the farm took on a shitload of debt um, yep. and then two years down the track on um, two years into a 10-year plan the drought hit and basically over the next three years basically strangled us and that's what, what it did but in that so that's the farming story, but my personal then mental health battle, you know, I spiraled out of control into a really dark place, um, you know, got completely out of hand. And most of my lessons that I share or the stuff that I try and share, those take homes for people to, you know, really have a think about during my talks are the stuff that I did badly. Um, and I got mm. to a stage and I, and I call mm. this in my talk, I call the, the, that moment in time because um, in two feet, one, one dark night in my dairy, in two feet, I gained a whole new perspective on life. And, um, you know, that, at that moment, um, you know, it was a really dark place to be. Um, it, life had given me two choices. Either con I could continue to be bitter and, and twisted and spiral out of control or I could <coughs> choose to become better. And I yeah. chose right there and then to become better. But the road to recovery from that took a long time because not long after that, we ended up losing the farm. Um, we lost our farm. And along with that, I also lost my identity um, and my purpose mm. in life, which is a, is a really thing um you know to lose you know uh, not only be struggling with mental health challenges but also lose your identity and your purpose or you know what's yeah. it all about kind of thing what was, mate, what was the uh what was the dark time what was the epiphany what was the moment um the the, the moment was the moment i hit the floor in my dairy after a you know an, an attempt on my life like that was the that was the darkest. That was my turning point as such. Um, How'd you try and do it? That's a that's a tough question. If I follow the guidelines, I shouldn't we shouldn't really tell you, but <laughs> because I already know. The, but, yeah. yeah, but the guidelines yeah. do shouldn't be talking about method yeah. and all that. But put it this way, that was a. Yeah, that's good to know. know. Yeah, it was an attempt on 
what um, on my life that's probably where we should leave it <laughs> without yeah. getting yeah. into any trouble <laughs> now that's interesting it's interesting and i i ask you that i kind of know that that why shouldn't you what like we both talk about mental health um yep. and it's a no-go to talk about method correct now according that to, is, that according, is. To, according to who and and you know like like so they're the so the around the um safe in, safe talk around mental health that's been set down by the government that's that is a no go zone. Um, yeah, sure. Very interesting. Oh, whoops, very interesting. Speaking at a financial planners conference in Adelaide mm. um, a few or oh, probably be eighteen months ago. Um, I at question time, like I shared my story, talked about yeah, what yeah. I just did then, and I got a hand up, first hand up question. It was from an insurance broker, and she said, "Well, how come you don't share that?" And I said, "Well, look, it's a close room. I'll share why, and and this is why." And um, she said, "Because it's funny, because that's the first question we have to ask people, and you know, it doesn't make sense." So. Mm. Uh, mm. And it, look, it depends on the audience and without trying to get into too much trouble, you just, that's the way I explain it now. So that's how I come up with that idea of explaining that situation by my two feet of perspective. And I think anyone that's known someone or has been in that position will understand what I'm talking about. And, um, yeah. It's the best yeah. way to, best way to explain that, that moment in time um, without breaking any rules and getting, yeah. <laughs> getting yeah. into trouble. I appreciate that. I, I um, I'm a great farmer, but not a great Boy Scout. I think it was the. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly that, that's exactly right, mate. I and you, that, and that, saying look, that at one point. And and I, and look, until I was um, abruptly told about these rules one day, and I was still that was saying the, that in my talks. Um, I yeah, and that was exactly right. And. Yeah, um, yeah, cool. And cool. I think, and I think the way I explain that, and in and in the context of my talk, I think everyone's got a fair idea what's going yeah. on, and yeah. um, understand where I'm at. Yeah. What one of the interesting things um, that I'm sure you would have noticed is whenever you go and do talks like this, um, and you have for the last what three years or so, um, yeah, three four, four years, years now, mate. Four yeah. years, mate. Jeez. Um, is is how many um, does it trigger people in your audiences? Does it trigger people uh, to come up and share afterwards? Does it trigger Q and A? You know, at Q and A time, um, how many people does it really wake up when you share? They share. You know, when you go there, they go there. You, your audience is kind of a reflection. Hey, so what's been yeah. your experience there? Well, massive, mate. <laughs> yeah, um, right. Some really yeah, confronting and challenging, and and I think that's how I. I um, developed my mission that like I share my mission at the start of my talks around creating yeah. awareness and, and um, creating awareness and education around mental health in rural and regional communities, but also mm. inspiring conversations. And that's what it does. And yeah. I think by sharing my story, it gives other people the permission to share theirs. Um, and look, yeah. and, and I, I, I'd love to, like we could talk for hours. I, I've got a couple of stories, but one of the most confronting stories that I can share with you as I was speaking at a big field days and I was doing like three or four gigs during the day just sharing my story in a 15 minute thing people could walk in listen to my story and walk away as just yeah. part of a rural group that had engaged me and there was a lady sitting in the audience and she came up to me and she said thank you for that and I said oh thank you for coming you know like I'm um, um, you know, whatever she goes, I've just got one question for you. She goes, at that darkest, darkest point of your life, um, how were you feeling? What were you thinking? And I and I said to her, look, I, I knew at a split second that it was not the right decision. My decision making was clouded. My whole world was clouded. Um, but I know now I'm lucky enough that I can say this in hindsight that I'm glad things worked out the way they did because I wouldn't be here sharing my story and, you know, and it wasn't the thing that I wanted. I wanted the pain to stop, not, not yeah. my life to stop. Yeah. And she goes, thanks for that. And um, she goes, the reason why I asked that is because we lost our son three months ago 
Mm. Um, and he and he took his own life. And I'm thinking, well, shit, for her to come up and tell me that was a lot of, you know, a lot of courage. Yeah. And, um, and and it just, you know, then that's what drives me. All those people that come up to me afterwards yeah. or touch Sorry. base. You know, I did a talk three weeks ago at a pub down in Gippsland. Yeah. And it was in a pub setting, you know, pretty relaxed doing my talk. And, you know, some of, uh, you know, a good handful of the people had seen me speak before. Mm. And as I was packing up with the organiser, everyone had kind of left. I got a text message and it was like a, like a, you know, it wasn't a short text message. It was a long text message from one of the ladies that was sitting in the front row. Mm. She just shared her story with me and like, shit, I was thinking all, a bit like the bucket list guy standing up in front of the Mount Everest call, thinking, shit, my story's got nothing on this. Like, you know, um, but she, I gave her the permission. Yep. Yep. Play on. So, so, um, you know, so I get that all the time and that's what drives me. That's, you know, and, and, and I touched on before about what's, what's your, how do I, how I get, get over, you know, that anxiety about being a speaker and standing up in front of people. And, and it's that that helps me. That's well, my really, purpose. ultimately, yeah, ultimately it's not about us. It's, it's about being of, uh, you know, I remember a, remember a thing that someone told me about Tony Robbins that sometimes, you know, cause he's, he's done what he's done for so many years. You could almost get compassion fatigue. And it's like, yeah. I'm, I'm out there helping people. And it becomes just like a show. And yeah. um, and he uses an anchor on a lectern or somewhere on stage of just a love heart, uh, a, yeah. filled in love, a filled in love heart, I believe. And someone might want to correct me on this, um, where he, he uses that love heart as an anchor to, go, to, to remember, reiterate and remind him to show love, like, you know, show love to the audience yep. and be there for yep. the audience and not about him. And I thought yep. that was really poignant is uh, he's a guy that's uh, influenced, you know, and positively affected a lot of people all around the world still on that, you know, on that mission. Um, but we do need those reminders and it's, it's those people in those audiences. It's the people in the audiences that kind of wake us up and remind us of our mission. It, 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 yeah. true true for you mate yeah it is and um yeah. it's funny i'm just laughing at that standing in the love heart thing I'm, as either there's one of two things happened to me because and you have not, not for a long time but you have seen me speak and things don't change because this is i'm i'm bearing my soul every time i get up and speak but for mm. me it's cathartic and i always totally. say to people like i've got 120 therapists in the room all that sort of stuff but I also, as you know, and so I've also got one voice in my head, so either your voice saying, stand fucking still, stand fucking still. And if that work, voice isn't working, my new other strategy that I do now is I curl my toes up in, in my, you know, I screw my toes up and it stops oh, yeah. me from moving. Oh, I'll have and to it try that on. Me, <laughs> just gets me centred again. But at the same time, I don't, I'm not really fussed about people yeah. thinking that I walk around and that too much because it just shows that it is an authentic story. It's coming from, oh, coming from you've changed. Inside. Oh, you've changed, mate. You've changed. <laughs> and it changed in such a good way. And, and the cool thing about this is, is you're waking people up. Not every farmer's got the balls to stand up on stage and share their stories because farmers are proud. How big of a problem, I mean, how big of a problem is is mental health. You'd probably know some stats in rural, um, in, in, like, yeah, rural Australia and the farming community, how big and, and how, you know, with coronavirus and everything else going on, how's, how's the well-being of, of Australia, let alone the planet, <laughs> going to be after this, after this coronavirus subsides? And I think it's funny, I've had a couple of conversations with farmers and, and as far as the stats go, they're really hard to find, to decipher. Yeah, um, yeah. There's not black and white figures. Um, yeah. Yeah. I know anecdotally from going to the communities, knowing what's going on and the stuff that you don't hear about and it's no. friggin' devastating, mate. It's devastating. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and particularly, you know... And let's be honest, we, you know, people who are not from farms or aren't on farms living in the cities have probably got no idea, right? 
No, mate, here, I'll give you a story. I'll, can I share a story yeah. with you? And this doesn't matter. I don't believe this matters whether you're a regional rural person or a city person. So I did a talk mm -hmm. at a school and I could notice, which I do now, I'm pretty good at picking people that are resonating with what I'm talking about now. And this 15-year-old girl just hovered at the back of the room and I seen a teacher give her an elbow to say it's okay go up and speak with him well I sat with mm. that girl for an hour and a half and these yeah. were the challenges that she was facing that morning so this is in a drought stricken community luckily now thank thank whoever we need to thank for the rain that they've already received this year um, mm. they've got more rain in the last three months than what they had in the last 18 months which is absolutely fantastic oh but, but 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 this girl mm. um, that morning it helped her dad drag two cows out of the dam and had to shoot them. This is a 15 year old girl. Oh my God, um, really? Not only that, <laughs> then she'd had, she, um, she had to you know, care for her, for her brothers and sisters because mum and dad were so stressed out and, and so forth. And then the other thing that was playing on her mind, and mind you, she's in tears when she's sharing this with me, that she was, the school that she was at was, um, you know, prep to year 10 um, from year 10 then you had to either go to a, another school a few towns away or you went to boarding school her choice was boarding school she was going to do a, some ag classes at this boarding school in Toowoomba mm. um, that was playing on her mind because she knew her mum and dad were under so much financial pressure so forth yeah. but the thing that really was getting her is that she was a 15 year old girl and she could only have one or two showers a week like and again, you don't you don't have to be a rural person yeah. to understand if you can only shower twice a week and you're a 15 year old girl, the massive effect that's having on your well being, but also your mental health. And and that was the conversation I had. So I think wow. it doesn't matter where you are; yeah, you can relate yeah. to to these stories Great and story. understand that you know that this is you know shit goes on in people's lives and that and that story can be a different story if i'm speaking in in a town or, or yeah, whatever that can be a city-based no, story that can be you know that can, that can, poverty exactly. that can be yeah yeah exactly right so yeah it's yeah, it doesn't matter where you are i think it's it doesn't matter that, and that's where i've been lucky lucky enough that even though i'm the unbreakable farmer i'm not just pigeonholed into those rural communities but that's no. obviously where my passion yeah, so, lies but the, um, to answer your question just before we move on is that, you know, isolation is probably not having the most bigger effect on farmers as what it has on everyone else. Cause <laughs> yeah, we're true. Used you're used isolated. to this. Well, my, um, my, uh, but, my, my partner but it Tracy, is. yeah, my partner Tracy is from Horsham from a farming background as yep. well. And like she was saying yesterday that, that yeah, uh, no, this is just no different to farmers. You know, farmers, they're all, yeah. uh, all in isolation. They haven't got everything at their fingertips. They're always kind of doing their own thing. And uh, it's probably not that much different. So, but I know, but I know it's having us, an effect. <laughs> I know it's having an out. effect. Yeah. An effect like simple things yeah. like friggin' footy, mate. Yeah. Footy's the epicenter of our communities. And the pubs. And we can't play, you know, the pub's not as much these days as back in, uh, you know, years ago. But the footy club, you know, Thursday night teas and, you know, the interaction of all those people on training nights and on game day, that's a big loss to the fabric of our society at the moment. Okay. It's going to have an impact as we, you know, until that gets going or if it gets going this year, who knows? Yeah. That's one yeah, of the big yeah, things. Yeah. The uncertainties yeah. is, is the killer at the moment. We do not know. Mate, what's the, I mean, we're... How's our form? We've got we've got uh, hashtags going on here on our shirts. You, you know, everyone knows the ticket before you kick it. But what what uh, have you guys stolen the the B the thing in the middle there? What what not no, too tough? Hashtag not, not no. too tough to speak up. So just so playing on that? words. The unbreakable farmer is the tough bit. Oh, you're unreal. You're unreal. Uh, so is this not too tough? Is this to speak your up? hashtag? Is it? Bloody oath, mate. I, I, thought, I, thought, I thought that was someone else's. No, it's mine. It's, I've learnt from the, I learnt from the best, mate. <laughs> mate, I, I, I reckon I should be getting a, at least a 20, yeah, 15, 20% click on everything. <laughs> um, but I... I, I but um, it, but it, was, it was really important. I was thinking yeah. about that, you know, and, and trying to use the Unbreakable Farmer bit, the tough bit in, in the middle. I love it. Um, 
it, it is. You, you, you're really not too cool. tough. No one, no one's too tough to stand up and, and actually, yeah. you know, and that's a lot of the stuff that I talk, to, talk about yeah. is around our emotions and that, especially blokes and, and, and especially yeah. rural people that are fairly stoic in nature. You know, yeah. It's, not, yeah. it's not a sign of weakness to stand up and say, shit, I'm struggling. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and it's you know, like we we talked about the other the other day. Um, we've both been, you know, uh, involved in the Are You OK Day movement. Yep. Um, and spoken on you know uh, on behalf and been ambassadors on behalf of uh, a number of different you know non for profits and, and this sort of thing. And um, being health and wellbeing speakers, uh, well, you know, around the um mental well-being space um we get asked to do these sorts of things and you know no longer are we in a in a state of are you okay day you know once once a year we have to ask it you know nearly every day and then and then the the science behind the are you okay not just to ask are you okay once but because the male ego especially will say yeah mate no I'm, i'm i'm good i'm i'm good you'd probably see it more in in rural and yeah. uh and then you ask the second no really how are you going yeah. and then you get and a, and somewhat I, of a real answer <laughs> that's really important i think around that because like if i ask you or you ask me vice versa and you know we had a bit of a discussion before mm. and both mm. of us are faced like we've got our challenges at the moment you know and mm. But if I ask you if you're okay, you're just going to say, yeah, mate, I'm good, or yes, or whatever. We need to ask, yeah. learn that art of asking open-ended questions that aren't going to get a yes answer or a no answer and, yeah, and delve a bit deeper, particularly yeah. if you're really concern, concerned about someone's well-being. Like, yeah. delve that yeah. deeper. And, and, and if you are concerned about them, don't be shy about delving deeper because, you know, I always talk about the two friends. Which friend do you want to be the the, the friend that um, you know didn't ask the, the right questions or the friend that you know and mm. and you know and something happens mm. and then you've got to live with that for the rest of your life or do you want to be the friend that delves a little bit deeper and you might piss them off and they mightn't talk to you for a little while but you've been able to get them help I know which friend yeah. I'd rather be it'd be this yep. one you know yep. I don't want to yep. live with that on my conscience forever yeah yeah totally totally and when you're explaining that, do you always do the thumb thing or the? Bloody oath, mate. <laughs> That's good. I know we have little. I draw little faces on there, <laughs> and they talk to each other. Uh, Beautiful, <laughs> love it, love it. I'm, I'm bringing that into my my show. <laughs> yeah, no, um, they just talk to each other, but I know which friend I'd rather yeah, be. No, I'd rather you, be you, that friend. I'd rather be that. I'd rather be that friend that showed some empathy and and asked those questions at the risk of pissing my friend off and yeah, yeah. that's it mate but but actually, at the, at the, to be to be honest mate that's real real close that's real close yeah. it, it, got a... it is, <laughs> it is it looks good yeah, <laughs> Very yeah love, it. love it um but you know it's, you know those open-ended questions are really important especially yeah. around How, asking people right in the middle we're we're, we're we're going to stage three lockdown here you know restrictions etc and people are you know, they're, 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 they've gone from the, the confusion. Now people are getting clear. Confusion before clarity, breakdown before breakthrough, survive. Now hopefully thriving. There's been the radical collaboration with uh, in amongst people. There's been a lot of resource sharing. There's been a lot of knowledge sharing um, uh, by by a lot of the experts. And what are some tips, you know, that you, that you can bring from the farming, from the from the um the, the community talks that you've done the stuff that you've recommended pre-coronavirus through to you know the advice that that you've um that you could that you could give us you know right now you know what should we do for each other what should we do for ourselves you know because you talk about resilience persistence determination leadership and of course mental well-being what are your kind of top tips as we uh, as we kind of close out here and well, i think I think to, to close out, it'd be the way I, I've closed out every one of my talks in the last four years are with my three lessons. Yep. And I think Please. it doesn't matter. They're, they're just as universal in this situation as your mental yep. health, whether it's relationships or business or whatever it is, is that you know, communication is key. 
Mm. We need to we need to be communicating with each other and communicating how we're feeling and how we're travelling. How it's do we really do that? Important. How do we do that? Like, we, do we do it on well, on direct well, message or how we how do we do that? Well, obviously, reaching out with a text message is better is better than not reaching out. But a phone call is better than a text message, and doing something like what we're doing now is better than a phone call because I can 100%. see your face, you can see mine, and we can talk. So, mm. yeah, obviously, yeah. the landscape's changed. But the idea of um, really understanding who's your support yeah. network, I, yeah. I'm really talk big on that. Who's your five people in your life, and, and yeah. keeping checked in with them all the time. But also your your broader community. Like I've had conversations with people this week I haven't for a long time, yeah, uh, and whether that's yeah, just crazy. through through <laughs> messaging or for on a phone call or or yeah. doing this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, check in with them, make sure they're doing okay. Um, and ask yeah. those questions, you know, how you're traveling. And, and I think at the moment, because this is not an isolated thing, everyone's struggling with the same yeah. thing. People yeah. are more willing to share how they're actually traveling because um, yeah. no one's embarrassed because everyone's in the same boat. I don't, um, yeah, so that's you, a really interesting point. I think egos, uh, you know, like, like the walls have come down in front of, you know, from a lot of people and they are opening up a lot more, a lot more, you know, a lot more FaceTime is happening, you, you, a lot more, um, you know, uh, we've got the technology more now more than ever that we can connect with family. We, and uh, it's seemingly, maybe because we're around a lot of positive people <laughs> because of what we do, a, yeah. a, lot of pe- a lot of people are connecting and, and everyone's available. So it's yeah. a unique time in history. And uh, let's hope, let's hope that those, those habits <laughs> stick. <laughs> we're yeah. creating a and foundation of, you know, talking to each other. And you touched on before about being a leader. Well, don't wait for someone to ring you. Stand right. up and be that leader in your community or in your in your group or in your friendship yeah. group or your yeah. family yeah. and be the yeah. one that's the communicator. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's number one. Well, number being one. staying is is communication. But the second one is about connection. Staying connected to that community in whichever way it is, and communication plays a big part in that. One of the reasons why I believe connection and community, they're tied pretty closely together, staying connected Mm. to that community is, and I share this all the time, and sometimes I get some weird looks because this is meant to be a mental health talk and he's talking about this, but I'll put it into Mm. perspective for you. But the power of of community is in its wisdom. Mm. So each Mm. and every every one of us are on a journey. We've all Mm. been on a journey. We've all perceived our journey, even though they might be similar to the next person, perceived it differently and picked up some different wisdom. Um, And we need to share that wisdom. 100%. Um, And the reason we, Mm. and if we share that wisdom, we can come up with solutions to the problems that we're facing. And the yeah. reason how, how that ties in with my story is because I disconnected myself from my community yeah, um, and I stopped communicating. Yeah. Mm. But what I found now as a speaker, as I speak around all the communities, someone will come up to me and I'm thinking, well, shit. Mm-hmm. And you know, a perfect example, I had a 68-year-old at a big conference that I spoke at, 68-year-old guy come up and he called me all the names under the sun after we talked because he was embarrassed that <laughs> I always say before my talk, if you feel uncomfortable, feel free to leave because I'm not yeah. going to walk away from my story. But just give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down as you walk out so I know how you're feeling. And if you're thumbs down, I've got some people in the room that will come and check on you. Yeah, he called me a F and C and everything else because he <clears> says, "How the hell was I meant to stand up in front of six hundred people and give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down?" I said, "Well, you've missed the whole point of the of the story." And he goes, "How's that?" And I said, "Well, because that's what it's all about. It's not being shamed ashamed of your story, and this is how you're feeling anyway." Story went on. The conversation went on, and I said, "I actually noticed you were sitting with two blokes." Mm. He goes, I said, who are they? They said, they're my neighbours, but they're also my best mates. And I said, do they know what you, <clears> do they know what you've just told me? And they goes, no, bloody way. If they knew that, I'd be, you know, I'm the best cotton farmer in the, in the Chinchilla district. Right? Yeah, right. I said, do me a favour, go and grab <clears> free beer and go over and tell them that story. Or well, half an hour later, those two blokes come back and said, we have no idea. Yeah, and that's yeah, why it's so good. But the thing is, is if we share that wisdom, if I had have reached out to my community, there might have been someone in a similar boat who could have shared some wisdom to help me get through my journey. 
a lot yeah. easier than what I did. Yeah. So that yeah. that's where that power of connection and Love community it. is. And 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 the third one and the final one is about seeking help. And you know, don't be too proud to reach yeah. out and seek help. Yeah. Whatever yes. that's for, whether it's for your mental health and well being, your um, you know, for um, your relationships for your business whatever it is if you yeah. need help reach out and seek it um, and and treat it seriously because you know as I said my my three lessons are my three failures <laughs> and seeking that help the first time I did I didn't really treat it seriously enough and that kept that spiral going instead of bringing it to a halt so yeah. uh, can, um, communication connection and, and seeking help are those three things that you know hopefully someone listening today can take away and apply in their life well a few things mate um one where can we seek help you know <clears throat> are we talking uh are we talking lifelines are we talking beyond blue who are we talking who are we talking about here there's so so much stuff out there mate that's the thing that, you know that's where that <clears throat> shared wisdom comes into it as well is that there's that much stuff out there it's just that we don't know about it and that's why when i talk about your support network your personal mm. support network knowing who your five people are as like an, an insurance plan so mm. the exercise that you can do is your five people um identify them who they are then yeah. acknowledge them so yeah. ring them yeah. up and say you have that conversation with them you're part of my support network Unreal. and then have them in your phone you know, um, in an order that, you know, if you need to speak to those people, you've got them there and, and you've already had the conversation. So they know that, you know, you're going to, um, that if this, and you, know, you can set up all different things, like you and I could set up a thing and if um, we could set up a, a code word. So, Trav, if you mm. were sitting in a meeting and I texted you and the code word was whatever, beach, yeah. we'll use yeah. that as an example, and you've seen that from me, you'd know you'd have to drop everything, regardless of how yeah. important that meeting was to you, yeah. to yeah. make that phone call to me because you knew that I needed you. Yeah. Love yeah. it, like a safe word, kind of, we joke about safe yes. words, but it's kind of, yeah, support. No, exactly I, love, right. I love that idea. Uh, I love that idea. That's really cool. And uh, but, but really knowing who those five mm. people are. So that's the first part of who can you reach out to. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that support work, network can be diverse and that can include your family, friends, you know, yeah. your, your doctor, your psychologist. For me, one of my, you know, as you know, I've got five kids. So there's five. I've got my wife. Yep. There's six. I've got mates as well. So I'm lucky I've got, but my dogs also play, play a part in my support network. Yeah. Because we can go for a walk at the end of the day and debrief and they still cool. love me unconditionally. They'll listen without interrupting. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. so they're yeah. a really big, important part of my support network. I love that. And, and the then fact that you've already had a conversation with them, the fact that you've already had a conversation with those five people as well um, is, uh, is awesome. So, and that's um, really important. And the, and the way that works as well is by having that conversation, you know, mm. Trav, you know, I've listened to Warren and he said about these five people, um, I want you to, to know that you're part of my support network and look, and I want to return the favour and be part of yours. And we all Love of a it. sudden start building these networks around ourselves to for that fallback position, you know, if shit hits the fan, yeah. we know who yeah. we can talk to. God, that that is that is uh, that that's amazing, mate. I, I I thank you for sharing that. Um, I, I'm going to get on the front foot myself and do that, and hopefully all the listeners and watchers can do uh, can do the same. Coronavirus or no coronavirus? Hey, mate, how can people connect with you? Um, mate, um, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, and my website www.theunbreakablefarmer.com.au. Um, yeah, always happy for people to reach out, um, yeah. even if they just want to have a chat, you know, because one of the things I learned from mine, sometimes it's easy to have that chat with someone who's at arm's length from True. your situation. And, you know, True. I've done plenty of them as well. You know, yeah, I, haven't yeah. got all the, I haven't got all the answers, mate, but I've got a good set of ears. You've got two ears and one mouth and we're going to use it in, that, in those proportions and uh, listen Correct. twice as much as we speak. So, hey, mate, uh, thanks, uh, thanks Heath, for jumping on the podcast. Um, some really valuable take-home information there. And uh, I hope you, hope you stay well and, and have this uh, precious once-in-a-lifetime, hopefully, time yeah. with, your, uh, with your, your great family there, buddy. No worries, mate. Really appreciate the opportunity and um, it's good chatting with you again. Cheers, mate.